All right, so we're just going to show you how easy Copic coloring can be and how fast. Leaving a couple of um, places where I want highlights later. That's why I left that little spot. Leaving another one over here. I love Copic markers. They're easy peasy. So I started with G16 and I'm going to come in with G19 for some shading. Making little circles. It's good to use little circles because uh, lines sometimes cause lines of demarcation. So you kind of just want to either do little circles or the feathering technique. I'll show you that in a minute. This is G18. Getting some nice dark shading in here. When you're putting on dark colors though, you're not going to cover as much area as, as when you used your lighter colors. G29 for the darkest of all. I'm thinking my light's coming from the top right, so I'm shading on the left side of the hat more. Move a little stem shadow. Now coming back in with G16 to blend it all together. And here's where I use my feather strokes. See that? Just a flick of the wrist and there it is. Easy peasy. Oh, I just love how they blend. It's just beautiful. I am going to color the clover. YG23 is what I started with. Again, I'm leaving a few areas highlighted with white. YG25 is my next shade. And then YG67. Coming back in with YG23 to blend it out. Feather strokes again. Beautiful. Now, since red and green are opposite colors, then they really make each other pop. I'm going to give this buckle a little red color. Let's just say it's uh, painted red leather. How's that? That was R27 and R29 for a bit of shading. using C2 and I'm going to cover this whole hat band with C2 and the little metal clip on the buckle. You're going to see what I'm going to do. You think I'm going to color this all gray, don't you? This is C4. Show you what you can do with your grays. So much fun. C5. See my feathering? 
Just a little flick of the wrist. And C7. And just a little bit of C7. Come back in with C2 to blend. Now you see how it looks like that curves around now because of the way I've put the lights and darks. But guess what? I don't want to stop there. I'm coming back in with YG23. Yeah. Because I just want it to be a grayish shade of green. Just to give it a different shade. I think I'm just going to come in with YG67 again, just where it's really dark. Copics are awesome. And YG23 again, just to blend it out. Now I've waited for my highlighted areas to be perfectly dry, which is important. And I'm coming back in with my colorless blender. And I'm going to feather along the edges of the highlight so that it's blended right into the green color. I actually think I left too big of a highlight on this side. I think I'm going to shrink it. So I got to get back my G9, uh, one, uh, G16. That's it. I can't count, but I can color. I think I want a little bit of a highlight down here too, so I'm going to try to make one with my colorless blender right here. We're going to highlight a little bit of blending on the clover. I love it. I think we're done. The only thing I'm going to come back in later after about five minutes is I'm going to come back in with my colorless blender and get rid of this green that kind of bled over the edge right here. I don't know if you can see it. But I'm going to ha have to wait till the paper is completely dry so I'll give it five minutes. But there you have it. 